So hello, hello, and welcome to the crazy world of coin collecting with our crazy Glenn. Hello, Glenn. I'm crazy. Yes, I am. Please don't help me. In today's video, we're talking about this two shillings that was issued from 1953 to 1967. And in 1968, they issued a 10 pence coin. So that's a large coin. And I don't have one on the table. I should have taken it out. But anyway, nah. these circulated concurrently up until 1993 when they reduced the size of the coin. So I don't have any UK 10 pence on the table, but I have these two coins from Gersey, which are the same specification as the UK coin. So these are 1968. And as you can see, no, not Guernsey, Jersey. As you can see, Jersey issued coins of the decimal type in 1968 same as the UK and here we have a 92 uh, 10 pence coin that's of the reduced size so the design's a bit different but the size is the same as the UK 10 pence that's because Jersey, Guernsey, Isle of Man uh, uh, where else? Gibraltar uh, Falklands and St. Helena use the UK pound. So, the first coin we have is an uncirculated 1953 uh, two shillings, and it's different from the rest in that if you can see, okay, where's the comparison I was going to make? Okay, so here we have a 1953, and here we have a 955. These are circulated, it's probably in fine condition, very fine condition. And you can see they have uh, Elizabeth II, the Gratia Regina, and on the earlier version they had Britannia Onion in the inscription. They removed that in the later coinage. So this coin here has a mintage of. 11,958,700 There's two known in matte proof and there's 40,000 proof coins but for a coin with nearly, nearly 12 million minted it's quite a low mintage for a two shilling coin of the UK uh, so in this condition which is um, fine worth about a dollar but in uncirculated condition you probably talk about 10 to 20 dollars so that's what you'd be paying. That's what I've seen them sell for anyway. You know, you might be lucky and get one of these for like five to ten dollars, which would be a good catch. Uh, but you know, they're harder to get in an uncirculated condition. Uh, someone might have kept it as an uncirculated coin, but over time it could have got damaged. Then we have a. I don't have a 1954, uh, they had 13 million, so that one is pretty much the same value as the 53. No, the 55, as you can see here, 25,887,000 and change, and in this condition worth about a dollar. So pretty much if it's under extremely fine, it's only worth a dollar. Uh, if it's if it's like in very good or good grade, then it's only worth scrap metal with a bit of metal value. This is probably about oh, ten cents, uh, but this one's nice. Uh, and yeah, probably that's probably very fine. It's worth about a dollar. Then we have the other years. So here we have nineteen sixty eight. So that has a mintage of. 47.8 million and change and the same value so you do get proofs of these coins and they're the more valuable coins but they don't have a mintage figure and they're pretty hard to get from buying okay here 57 33 million a bit over also worth about a dollar so what you'd be looking for in these coins are errors or uh, pretty much uncirculated coins. 
that's what you'd want okay so here we have 59 so 59 14 okay I don't have 58 which had 8 million so that one will be worth a bit more so 58 with uh oh no nine and a half million should I say so nine and fifty eight if you're buying it you're probably paying double feet the value of uh the nineteen fifty seven so fifty eight in this condition probably worth about two dollars in uncirculated probably at least twenty in this coin fifty nine at mintage of fourteen million in this condition you're probably talking about dollar fifty two dollars because the lower mintage uh, as you can see very fine if you want uncirculated at least fifteen dollars then we have a 1960 so it's a low mintage of 13.8 million uh, about about two dollars in this condition so that's what you'll be paying and uncirculated also about fifteen dollars and as you can see i didn't tell you the design so this one has the rose for england it has the fist for scotland the clover for uh, ireland and it also has the leak for wales so this is the first coin of the two shillings that had the uh, welsh included in it so that is a bit different than the uh, crown coin which did not have the whales represented in the design which is still a pity so anyway it's quite a nice design okay then we have 19 so 60 61 had a mint of 37 million so in uh, this condition we're talking about a dollar then we have 62 Mintage of uh, 35 million, a bit over, and about a dollar in this condition. So, this is very fine. Then we have, okay, we have 50. So, what was that? 62, okay, 63, 26 million. This is a bit of a better coin. So, this coin will probably be in extremely fine condition. So, it has a lot of damage on it. Uh, I presume in the American classification system would be almost uncirculated. So that's what you need to look at as well. The Sheldon system used in the United States and also the Australian system are pretty different in the classification of the coins. So 26 million in this condition you're probably talking about three or four dollars. So that's a good coin. Then we have a 65. And I don't have 64. Hmm. And the 64 only had 16 million, and it's worth about uh, the same in very fine, probably a dollar fifty. Uh, non circulated, you're talking about ten dollars. Okay, this is 65, minted 48 million, so quite a lot. Uh, one dollar in, very fine, but this one's almost uncirculated, so you would be paying probably at least five dollars for this coin. So that's that coin. Then we have a 66. So this is the highest minted of the lot of 83 million. Actually, 84 million. It's just 1,000 off 84 million. And in this condition, uh, which is also almost uncirculated, probably we're talking also about $5. Although this one has scratching, so someone's tried to clean it for some unknown reason. It doesn't need to be cleaned. Uh, so that probably half the price to like two and a half dollars. Uh, still a nice coin to get. Then we have 67 has a mintage of 39.7 million. Yeah, so this one in this condition, very fine, bad dollar. Uncirculated, probably about five dollars as well. And then you got 1970, which I don't have because that was a proof issued in sets only. And 750,000. To buy a proof coin, which is uncirculated anyway, shouldn't be circulated if it come out of a set, and we'll talk about ten dollars. So anyway, that is a nice coin design. So, and as you can see from these coins, the 
older the coin gets, the more circulated they are. Uh, that's just the way they are. If you get coins from the 60s, more than likely is that they'll be in extremely fine condition to uncirculated. And if you get coins from the 50s, uh, they're more than likely to be circulated. So let me know what you think of this coin. Leave a comment down below. And I hope this value um, that I have just gone through helps you with your coin collecting. If you want to confirm the prices, I would recommend you go to eBay sold items, not the listings, because you know people can list the coin for as much as they want. Uh, but eBay sold items, and that would give you a price range of the coins you have. Then you just take all the prices, add them together, and divide them by how many coins were sold. That would give you a average price. Anyway, thank you very much, and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you, and goodbye.